Hey guys, HamsterWall here with another video, and today I'm returning to a very old video format that I haven't done in a while, and that is a guide. More specifically, a step-by-step -step guide on how to get the skeleton key for Skullamance from start to finish on the Horde side. I got inspired to do this quest when I was checking out stuff that I could potentially get out of this dungeon when I would eventually get my hunter to level 60. So, without further ado, let's get started. So the quest for this starts in either Orgamar, Thunder Bluff or right here in the Undercity at Harbinger Balthazad. And the quest is called A Call to Arms, The Plaguelands. Now I advise you to start the quest chain here because, well, it's the closest to the zones where we do the quest to eventually get the skeleton key. Once we get the quest from Harbinger Balthazad, we're headed to the Bulwark, a horde outpost at the border of Turisfall Glades and the Western Plaguelands. Once we get there, we talk to High Executor Darrington, where we get the quest called Scarlet Diversions. This quest will require us to burn a Scarlet Tent in the Western Plaguelands and plant the Scourge Banner at that particular place. Quick note, once you accept the quest you'll get the banner, but you have to get the flame in a bottle to burn down the tent from the box that is right next to High Executor Darrington. Trust me, I've had my fair share of moments where I was at the camp, cleared all the mobs, and then I realized I was stupid enough to forget to bring the flame in the bottle. So now we're heading into the Western Plaguelands, and once you see the first farm to your left, which is called Fellstone Field, you need to pass the barn and then make a left into the woods. After that you'll see a small camp of Scarlet Soldiers with a tent and banner. Clear the area of the mob so you can get to the tent and once you've done that click the tent and plant the banner. And there you go, quest completed. After that we go back to the bulwark and get the follow up which is called All Along the Watchtowers. Which might be a reference to either Bob Dylan or Jimi Hendrix. Anyway for this quest we need to mark four towers located in Enderhall. When you approach Anderhall from the north, you can easily see the first two towers that you need to mark. Just make your way up there by killing the mobs around the towers, walk up to it and then click on the item. A torch will appear and there you go, you mark one tower. It's that simple. Note that if you do this at level 60, you're high enough level to not aggro the elite in the tower itself, which will definitely save some headache. As you can see, Anderhall is crawling with undead mobs, so tread lightly and be on the lookout for these abominations, which are elite mobs and hit quite hard. The third tower is at the southwestern edge of the city and should be easy to spot if you're on the road that heads to the Alterac Mountains. Then the last tower is at the southeastern edge of Anderhall, close to the bridge. Once we marked all four towers, we head back to the bulwark for the follow up. The follow-up is called Skolomance, which requires us to talk to Apothecary Ditters, and he is located to the right of High Executor Darrington. Once we talk to him, we get the next part, called Skeletal Fragments. For this part, we need to go back to either Fellstone Field or Enderhall, and kill the non-elite undead mobs that are located there. These mobs have a chance of dropping Skeletal Fragments, and you'll need to collect 15 of them. The quest itself is pretty easy, as the mobs aren't too hard to kill and the drop chance of these are pretty high. You can also get them from different locations in the Western Plaguelands, but since these are the closest to the Bulwark, I'd advise you to just stick to either one of these locations. Once we got 15 of them, we go back to Apothecary Dithers and he will imbue them for us. And with the next quest called Mold Rhymes With, the fragments are imbued and we need to take them to a goblin called Crinkle Goodsteel, who will make a mold out of the imbued fragments. He resides all the way in Gadgetsan, so you have quite a journey ahead of you. Unless you're a mage, because then you can just port to Thunderbluff and fly from there. Please note that in order to do this quest, you will need the fragments and 15 gold in order to complete it. Hey, he's a goblin, so don't act surprised that you need to lay down money to get what you want. Once we arrive in Gadgetsan, we find Crinkle Goodsteel close to the southern border of the town, and we talk to him. Then we hand in the fragments and the 15 gold, and presto, we get our skeleton key mold. Then it's on to the next quest called Fire Plume Forged, which requires us to go to Fire Plume Ridge in Ungoro Crater and transform the mold into the unfinished skeleton key. However, in order to do that, you'll also need two thorium bars, which are made by blacksmiths. So find someone that is a blacksmith or just buy two off the auction house. Your choice. 
Once you got the bars, we gotta go to Fireplume Ridge, which is in the center of Ungoro Crater. When you get there, make your way to the top of the mountain. Once you're there, click on the Skeletal Key Mold and watch the magic. And now that's done, we have ourselves an unfinished Skeleton Key, which we need to take back to Apothecary Dithers at the Bulwark. So after another journey across the world, we're back at Apothecary Dithers for the next part, which is called Araja's Scarab. Now there's one more thing we need to do before we have the key, and that is kill a lich called Araj the Summoner, which resides in the heart of Anderhal. This mob is an elite, and you'll need a group of friends to kill him. Luckily, I'm just on my own private server, so I'll bust out the old insta-kill button. Once he's dead, his phylactery will appear on the ground. Click it, collect his scarab, and head back to the bulwark. There we talk to Apothecary Dithers one last time, and watch him create the key. And then last but not least, we talk to High Executor Darrington, and there we go, we have the skeleton key, and now we can officially enter Skolomance. And there you go folks, a step-by-step -step guide on where to go and what to do in order to get yourself a key for Skolomance. Quite fascinating that you have to do all that for just a dungeon, not even a raid. One thing to keep in mind is that not everyone in your party needs this key to enter Skolomance, all it takes is just one guy to open the door and you're ready to rock. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this helped you in getting the key. And, as always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Wheel, and have a good one.